There was a whole host of games yesterday, um, and Jalen Hurts doing what he did. Where Are we going to hear that it's his gig the rest of the season, and then that's the end of that? I mean, because it was definitely a much better, not just the result wins, but everything else, Mike. Yeah, how can it not be his job the rest of the way? Last week, Jason Kelsey, the Eagles' longtime center, had some very frank and raw comments about how the failure of the offense is a total team production. The players, the coaches, everyone. That it's not just Carson Wentz. Everybody stinks. So when you change out one position and all of a sudden you have your signature win, you beat the Saints who had every reason to keep winning because they were holding on to the number one seed by a very slender margin, and now they're not. That's impressive. And so whatever it was you did yesterday – you keep doing. I'm stunned that Doug Peterson wouldn't come out and state the obvious. Of course it's Jalen Hurts. How could you go back to Carson Wentz at this point? And the question is, how far can Jalen Hurts take them, and how clear will it become by the end of the season that come 2021, there's no competition, there's no presumption it's going to be Wentz, it's going to be Hurts, and they're going to spend the full off season <laughs> trying to build an offense around the guy that has shown he can come in and and save a lost season. And I got Jim Ursay coming up uh, in hour two, uh, Mike. And the reason why I bring that up is everybody basically assumes, well, Philip Rivers is, uh, you know, uh, going to need toe surgery. He's already got his high school coaching gig all set up that he's going to be done there. And that's a perfect spot to send Carson Wentz. Send him there. Frank Reich was the m- might have been the, the real guru uh, on that uh, sideline for Wentz. Do you think it's as simple to connect those dots? Mike? Well, I think it is. And here's the reality. Step number one for the Eagles. And this is a general rule for any effort by any sports team to trade a player. Step one, insist you're not trading the player. <laughs> That's how you get the best possible leverage. Otherwise, yes. maybe you have to pay some of his salary, like the Dolphins did to unload Ryan Tannehill onto the Titans. Maybe you've got to send a second-round draft pick, like the Texans did, to get rid of Brock Osweiler's contract several years ago. So you have to create the impression you're sticking with the guy, you still believe in the guy, you're not going to trade him, and then you hope that someone believes it. I don't think anyone will. Their best hope is to get two teams interested, to get the Colts and someone else interested. And the litmus test for me, Rich, is very simple. When Frank Reich, the head coach of the Colts, who was the offensive coordinator of the Eagles in 2017, when Wentz was on track to be the MVP, but for the torn ACL, he suffered December 10 of that year. If Reich doesn't want him, that's the ultimate red flag that no one else should. And, and so we'll see how it plays out, but it makes a ton of sense for Wentz to end up in Indianapolis. If you'd have polled Colts fans back in March and said one year, 25 million, who do you want, Rivers or Wentz? It would have been unanimous Wentz. And now, yeah, circumstances have changed, but I, I think that, that there's value in this idea that maybe Reich can reset the clock for Wentz. He just needs a fresh start. And maybe if you get out of all of that pressure in Philadelphia, from circumstances, from fans, from everything, maybe he can rediscover himself. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.